We've got quite a tricky build this session, but follow the instructions and we'll get through it together. Today we are going to assemble the rear axle of the car, as shown on pages 10 and 11 of the build manual. The rear axle is what we will connect the rear wheels to, and it's what allows us to transfer power from the motor to the rear wheels, helping us go. You'll need a couple of tools for this build, allen keys, spanners, and even a hammer, which can be quite dangerous if you use it incorrectly, so make sure you have adult supervision whenever you use the hammer. As always, we have our master builder to guide us through the process, so over to Steve. Rear axle, big metal bar with some holes in each end. There's two in the right hand end, one in the left hand end. Important to get it the right way around. Some of the parts we're going to install onto the axle are our axle sprocket, which takes the drive belt that uh, is driven by the motor, and a taper lock bush. This is tapered, so narrow at one end than the other, and only fits into the sprocket one way round. And you want it lined up so that the three holes line up. The fixings for that are only two Allen screws. So they want to go in the two holes that are 90 degrees away from the slot. So, in those holes. Just do them up gently at the moment, finger tight. They will go in a long way. And then we're going to apply that onto our axle. And it needs to be done so that those iron keys face the center of the axle. So we're gonna go in this way. And that's the slide on to the axle there. I've got a nice long allen key here and I'm just going to do those screws up a little bit more. Now I'm not making this tight but at some point as that goes on it will mean that the bush clamps the whole of this assembly onto the axle and stops it rotating. Just tweak those up enough so that those two items don't come apart but it still rotates on the axle. Next up we need our axle bearing which allows the axle to turn freely whilst, once it's mounted to the bottom of the car and you can see I'm holding what we call the axle uh, the bearing housing at the moment these are two parts that actually come off and we don't don't need those for the time being so I'm going to put those to one side we'll come back to those when we're actually fitting the axle to the car the bit we need at the moment is actually the bearing this, this bit here which has like this has two grub screws this has two little grub screws as well um, again, we don't want them coming through to the inside, so it would stop this going onto the axle. Again, slide it onto the axle with this bit towards the middle of the axle, and just bring that up to here. The next step is for us to actually fit what we call a spring tension pin. And so this is a spring steel pin with a slot down the middle, and when we push that through into this hole, it will compress and the spring in it actually means that it's trying to expand and actually makes it a tight fit in that hole. Now you'll notice that I've actually got this on a pair of trestles and I've placed a couple of bits of wood uh, held on with tie wraps on these just to protect the underside of the axle because if you put it directly on the metal of the trestle when I hammer that it could actually damage the axle. So a bit of wood is a bit softer and it helps protect that. Important thing though now going to be using a hammer which can hurt your hands if you hit hands but equally when hitting things with a hammer they can um, spin off and they can actually shatter sometimes and so protecting your eyes is a good idea now I do wear glasses but these aren't actually safety glasses so I'm going to put a pair of goggles over my glasses but definitely a good idea what will help get that pin in is a bit of lubrication and if I put a bit on the pin itself to start with I can actually have my hole over nice my over my piece of wood here and I'm going to start tapping that into the hole to make sure it's going to go straight takes a lot of hammering and it's going to come out the other side so when it's getting close to coming out that side I'm going to actually need to 
move it away from my piece of wood. So here we go. It's very noisy as well, so you might want earplugs even. Checking as to whether it's coming through. Not quite there, but almost. So I'll give it a little bit more over the wood and then I'm going to move it so that the pin can come out past the wood. Now what we want is for this to come through so we have equal distance on each side of the axle. So I'm not there yet. Nearly checking regularly. And I think that looks about right. Looks like we've got equal amounts either side. And now these bits can't actually come off. So having done the left hand end of our axle, we need to turn our attention to the right hand end, um, which is the end with the two holes through the uh, center of the axle. And the first part we need is this, which is our disc hub. Um, looks a bit like a mushroom or top hat. Um, and it's orientation, which way round it goes, is this bit towards the center of the axle. And this hole is gonna have to line up with this hole here. And we're gonna put another pin through there with our hammer. So I'm going to slide that on there. Now, safety, go back to the safety goggles, just in case, because we're going to be using a hammer. And what I'm going to do is, as we did before, squirt a little bit of oil down the hole, catching any excess with my tissue. And I'll put a bit of oil on my pin. What I've found, is that if I put my little allen key up from underneath through the hole when I push this one in from the top I'll be able to actually make sure that the holes are lined up but I'm going to hold on to that for a moment I'm just going to get the pin started in the disc hub before it gets through to the axle because I don't need the holes lined up until then So that started my pin in the disc hub, but I need to make sure it's lined up with the hole. So I'm going to come up through my disc hub and through the axle. And with careful use of hands, I can actually keep those lined up while I then tap this through. Now I can take my little Allen key out of the way because I've gone my pin's gone through far enough that it's entered the hole in the axle and I can carry on passing that through there. And you can see it is going, it's not come out the other side just yet but it will do. And it's just starting to come out the other side and like the other end of the axle we want this to be um, equally spaced either side. There we go, I think that's about even. So that's our disc hub um, fixed to the axle. The next step is actually we're going to want to attach our brake disc to the hub. Now, on the brake disc in the centre here, you'll see a little arrow. That marks the rotational direction the disc should run in. And I know that if you're looking from the back of the car, it should rotate forwards. So I can pop that on here and then we take now six little screws. Gone away and got my little bottle of thread lock here. Now thread lock is a little fluid that you apply to the um, threads on a bolt and it actually stops it vibrating undone. A bit like a spring washer or a nylock nut. Um, whoops, one gone. Now when applying this you only need a little drop on the thread. Don't need to smother it. So just a little bit there and then we want to get that into our hole carefully lined up and there we go and now I can turn my allen key around so I get more leverage and use the long end as the handle and tighten up. Now it's always good if you've got a circle of fixings like this to do the diametrically opposed order. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go, that's our brake disc on there. And the next step will be to get our rear axle uh, bearing and put that on to the axle because we've got yet another pin to insert uh, as before. A bit of oil to lubricate the pin and the hole. Not forgetting my safety goggles. And then we're going to get noisy again. There we go. That's about right. So now our bearing can't come off that side either. Um, but you will notice that because this hasn't been tightened up, these screws again have come loose. I'm just gonna tighten them back in gently. While Steve tightens those screws, I'm gonna talk to you about bearings. Now bearings are parts that constrain movement in a desired direction whilst also helping to reduce friction. A little challenge for you now. Grab the build manual and see if you can count how many different bearing types are used on a Goblin car. I won't wait long, so you best pause the video before I spoil the answer. I can't wait any longer. Firstly, we have the greasy roller bearing in the wheels. Roller bearings use cylinders like a rolling pin to allow for rotation. These bearings are really strong and can support high loads. The steering column has the two plastic blocks which act as a plane bearing. A plane bearing has no moving parts so it's really cheap and lubrication is used to reduce friction. And finally the rear axle that we've just built has ball bearings like marbles to allow for rotation. And these are probably the most common type of bearing. So the correct answer was three. There are three different types of bearings on the Goblin car. Roller bearings, plane bearings and ball bearings. Now, speaking about ball bearings and marbles, I've got a really cool demonstration that you could actually do for yourself at home. All you need is marbles and some plastic lids that I found around the kitchen. Place the marbles into one of the lids and make sure you don't lose any. That one almost got away. Place your other lid on. And to there, we have our very own makeshift bearing. Now, if I use something clear, like uh, this dish, then we'll be able to see the difference that the bearing makes. If I try and rotate the dish on the table, you can see it's really quite resistant and if I get the force just right, we get round about half a turn. And that's because there's a lot of friction between the table and the dish. But if I grab a bit of blue tack and stick it onto our bearing and I give it the same force, whoa, it just keeps going. It just doesn't want to stop and that's because the ball bearings as you can see rotate with the movement of the dish and that drastically reduces friction. You can take this even further and start experimenting. I mean what happens if you use more or less marbles and does the size of the marble make a difference? Have a play and let me know what you find out, I'd be really interested to know. Now if you've been building the rear axle as part of a sub-assembly this is as far as you can go until the chassis is fully complete. Check back in with episode 1 to find out what other sub-assemblies you could be building. Equally, if you are running out of time in your build session, this is a good place to stop as everything's quite nicely contained. We however are going to keep on building, so over to Steve for fitting the rear axle to the chassis. So having assembled the parts onto our rear axle, the next step is actually to assemble the rear axle onto the car and you'll see I've laid out some parts here at the moment um, these are the bearing shells um, two pieces for each side which we set to one side earlier when we were putting the bearings on the axle to make life easy for myself because I'm working alone I've actually also um, hooked up the axle and suspended it under the car just on a couple of cable ties hanging from the um, chassis here now if you're working as part of a team hopefully you can have a person each side that will support the axle but as I say I'm working on my own so I've uh, supported it temporarily at the moment. Now first important thing and something not to forget is drive belts to go on the axle because if you fix the axle to the car 
without putting your drive belts on, you're not going to be able to get them on later. Now, I'm talking about drive belts, plural. Only one is used at a time. The second one, it's really advisable to put it on the axle as a spare, because if you have a belt snap at an event to replace it, if you haven't got one actually on the axle, you've got to dismantle quite a lot to actually get it on there. Whereas if you've got one that's actually cable tied to the axle, then it's a matter of a few minutes to be able to actually uh, refit it. So I'm going to take those and put them over the axle here, over the axle sprocket. And for the moment, I'm just going to let them hang on the middle of the axle. The next step is getting my bearing actually under here attached to the car. And so we're going to take our two pieces of our bearing shells and the top bit and the bottom bit and put them around the bearing like that. And those two are going to come up and be connected to two holes in the chassis here. Um, but there's also a further part that needs to go here, which is this part, which is a drive belt cover. Now it's going to get really tricky for me at this point because I've got a lack of hands. So I'm going to take my belt, my bolt with its washer on there already and hope that I can get that to go down through the hole here. There we go. So now I've actually got that through the hole. I can hold it with my other hand. Take a washer and a nut. And as we do with all these things, get that to go on the bolt and just tighten it finger tight for the moment. And now that one's in, it's a lot easier, hopefully, to get the second one in on the other side. Now we're going to fix the right hand end of our axle to our chassis and as we had a plate on the left hand side which was protecting the uh, drive belt we've actually got a bracket on this side which is for the brake caliper to mount to on these two holes here. Um, this goes down into the chassis to match up with the holes through the chassis. As before on the other side we have our sort of horseshoe shaped bearing shell that goes underneath and then the other part goes on top of the bearing and then we need to bring those up trying to get our holes aligned and then I can hopefully drop a bolt with its washer down through the hole I can pick up my washer and nut to go underneath there there we go and then Another washer and nut goes on there, and then we have a gap between our uh, disc caliper, brake disc caliper, and the bracket, and we'll line those up uh, later when we actually come to fit the brake caliper. So I mentioned earlier about uh, cable tying the spare drive belt. So here's our main one that we're going to use: spare drive belt to the rear axle. What I wanted to do is highlight the fact that I've used three cable ties here, but I've also hooked one end over this inner pin um, to keep it out of the way. The important thing to note is that when this rotates, that none of it actually touches the chassis. Uh, if it's fouling on the underside of the chassis, then that's going to slow you down and cause wear to various parts. So try and keep it so that nothing touches the bottom of the chassis. Um, and we'll cover fitting the main drive belt when we've got the motor in place. So what we're going to do now is tighten up the two nuts and bolts sets uh, at each end of the axle and for that we need a 17mm uh, spanner and I've actually gone for a 17mm socket with an extension bar. Put my ring spanner on the bottom and then I can tighten away. There we go. So the final step in finishing off our back axle assembly and fitments to the car is to fit the wheels on the back end. Um, on the right hand side, it's the same sort of wheel as the two at the front with this black ring and roller bearings inside the wheel there. 
Um, but before we put that on, what we must do is we put a large washer on there that actually butts up against that pin on the right hand side. Then the wheel. And that washer acts like a bearing for the wheel itself, so it allows it to spin against that pin. And then we're going to bolt that on with a bolt on which we put a spring washer. Now a spring washer is another form of locking device to stop things coming undone. Um, it has this little notch in it, and show it to the close-up camera here. Um, so it has a little spring effect. We put that on and then we put a large washer, large diameter washer on there and then we screw that into the axle. Now in order to tighten that up you've got to be able to stop the axle from spinning. So I recommend actually you don't try and do this too tight at the moment. It's best done when the car is on, it's on the ground and once we've got the brakes fitted as well because you can use the brake to lock the rear axle to stop it spinning. I'm just going to tighten that up gently at the moment. And then on the other side we have a drive wheel. Now the difference between the bearing wheels as we call them which go on the other three corners is that there's no bearing in the drive wheel. It's a plain centre there um, but on what goes on the inside towards the middle of the car we have this little slot cut across here. There's a pin on the um, outside here and that's where we want to put that slot into. So I'm just going to pop that on and then it's bolts with spring washer and then the large plain washer and that gets tightened in. And again, I haven't got a means of holding the axle particularly well at the moment, so I'm just using my hand on the brake disc, but you'll be very careful not to get your fingers through the brake disc because that will hurt your fingers. There we go. We have a car with four wheels on it now. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe. Pretty please? Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.